Hey guys, sorry I haven't made a video in a while. I've been really busy. Hi, my name is Matthew, and today I thought I would bring you my top five fiction of 2017 from my childhood bedroom. Now, for those of you who have been a part of my channel since its incarnation, I actually did my booktube newbie tag in this very same room, and now I'm home visiting my family again, and I think there's something a little bit poetical about me now giving you my wrapping up thoughts of 2017 from the same place. For those of you who are new to my channel, you probably don't care. So let's talk about the books. Because it's my channel and I do whatever I want, I'm gonna have an honorable mention. So coming in at number six is The White Book by Han Kong, translated from Korean by Deborah Smith. Now this book I just recently finished and I don't even really wanna give a rating to it or even review it. I was really impacted by it and I don't know what else. This is a book that left me in a lot of profound, thoughtful moments. A beautiful translation. I think Deborah Smith is the queen of all the land when it comes to translation. But it's the kind of book that I really want to reread and revisit time and time again. Specific passages, the text as a whole. It's gorgeous, and I highly recommend it. I know it's not out in America yet, but you can get it in the UK. Book Depository exists, even though they hate my credit cards. Um, they still won't send me books. I'm not bitter at all. But that's all I'm really gonna say about the white book. I just wanted to sort of solidify it having been read in 2017 so that later I can revisit and collect and gather my thoughts. It's a beautiful book. Okay, the official list starts with number five, The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. The Heart's Invisible Furies is kind of the unabridged gay Irish soap opera that I never knew that I wanted or needed. This is an utterly whimsical, heart-wrenching, at the same time story about Cyril, who is possibly the most dislikable character I have ever rooted for with all of my being. His life chronicled from birth to death, and specifically his life in relationship to being a homosexual from Ireland, in Ireland, and then other countries, and then especially America as well. It's a lot of book. This is a very long book, and it's a very beautifully written book. It also has incredible one-liners, just like really funny lines. But then on top of all of this, it reads like a soap opera. These are some wild circumstances, some very specific characters. Right when something is about to climax, you get an incredible plot twist that isn't a plot twist. It's like a very convenient, you know, deus ex machina, but for some reason, because it's inherently so Irish, you're on board with it. I'm talking with my hands because I love it so much. It's just a very powerful, impactful book. It's something that I really went along the ride for. Is it the most, like, brilliant piece of writing I've ever read? No, but it chronicles the 40s through today regarding homosexuality. Not really that intersectional, I will give it that. It's not an intersectional book, but specifically for this man's experience. It chronicles beautifully the experiences from the 40s, 50s, 60s, AIDS crisis, and today. Coming in at number four is Catharsis, or really the entire Awaken Online series by Travis Bagwell. This is a literature role-playing game, a lit RPG series that I've talked about on my channel quite a few times, but I actually only read it at the beginning of the year this year, so it is still very new to me. Because the age of our main characters is younger, this could technically be considered YA, but because I have read this whole series and devoured it, I'm including it in my more literary fiction list. Whatever that means. Whatever that means. This is an action-packed, really entertaining series. Is it the most, like, depthful and thought-provoking, you know, quizzical text I've ever read? Absolutely not. But I have never been so riveted by events transpiring in a novel before until I read this book. The audiobooks are also fantastic for this series. They all have those little video game sounds that make it seem like it's happening actively. There are three larger novels that are out, two from the main character's perspective, and then the third one that just came out recently, I've already talked about it on my channel, is from the character Riley's perspective, and that was also so good. Things just keep getting wilder and wilder, and I cannot wait to see what Travis Bagwell has in store next. Coming in at number three is The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness by Kyung Suk Shin, which is a Korean translation. Kyung Suk Shin is an author whose entire repertoire that has been translated into English I just read for the first time this year, and I love her. I have talked about talking about her on my channel. I really want to do a video dedicated to just her books, because she is an author that has become very important to me, and this was 
my favorite of her works that I have read so far. The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness is a very interesting tale in the spirit of Norma Ray, Newsies, uh, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, all of these, uh, Invisible Man, all of these uh, unionization plot lines, which is something that I have found in literature that I really enjoy. Um, just stories about factory workers and conditions and that's something that if you have any recommendations for, I would love. Put those in the comments down below because stories about factory conditions, industrialization, I find riveting. Um, and this is about that. And what I like about this in particular is that this takes place during a time of other political turmoil and uprising in Korea. But these characters and their family are kind of outside of it. And there's something really interesting about what is it like to explore the people on the rural side of what is happening in the major cities. Not only does it deal with themes that I super love exploring in books, but the depiction of family and friendship is very strong in this, female friendship especially, what it means to help one another, and what it means to sleep at night. It's just really beautiful, touching story that I will probably reread very soon. Coming in at two, and I had a very hard time picking between one and two, but number two for me is Elmet by Fiona Mosley. This I did a Matthew Reads for, so I will link that down below also because self-promotion. And Elmet was beautiful. Elmet is a gorgeously, masterfully written book. Now Elmet, as I'm pretty sure everyone knows, was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize. It got a lot of hype here on booktube. I listened to the audiobook of it because the audiobook was only available in the States for a while. It only just got printed in the US, and I loved it. The narration style vacillates many times in style. The feeling of momentum just increases throughout the text, but it also has these gorgeous pensive moments. It's, it's delicious. It is a delicious piece of language, all about the nature of violence, the nature of family, the nature of ignorance, and a relationship to the land. I love this book. I love Elmet. I have sung the praises of Elmet. I have forced Elmet into all of my customers at work's hands, to my friends here on booktube. Love it. 100% love it. And lastly, and of course bestly, because this is my number one, The Great Passage by Shion Miura. This is a book about words. This is a book about linguistics and the importance of language as captured through the creation of a dictionary. Now from what I understand, and I actually haven't seen or read any of these other formats, The Great Passage has been turned into, I believe, a drama, into manga, into anime, respectively. Like this is a, apparently a very popular story in Japan that was printed a while ago that I only just discovered this year. But this is about people who are trying to craft and create the perfect dictionary, or what they deem as the most necessary dictionary to be printed. And the details behind that were something that I found fascinating, and then the intricacies of what words mean what in one context in Japanese, and how the colloquialism versus the ancient history versus everything combine to make a definition, or multiple definitions. Literally things as simple as the margin length on a page, or or the size, the font type, like just tiny little details, tiny little details that were so delicately described and then translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter, who's one of my favorite translators also. She translates all of Mina E. Mitsumura's work, and I'm a big fan of her. So this book was just like a combination of everything I loved in one little thing, and I highly recommend it. The audiobook is great. I've read it twice now. The audiobook is great. The physical text is also great. I think more people need to experience this story, especially if you are a lover of words, a lover of books. So that's it. That is my top five. I will say that this video was very hard for me to decide upon. Like, I read some really good texts this year. I read some more fun stuff. I've read some more thought-provoking stuff. I've read more books than I have ever read in my life this year, and to narrow it down to five choices was was interesting. Of course, I don't keep the stakes too high on myself because it's reading. It should be fun, and I think it is fun. Yeah. So I would love to hear from you what your top fiction book was of 2017. Comment that down below if you feel so inclined, or if you have any questions or comments about the books that I mentioned today, please put that in the comments as well. I love hearing from you. You can also just say hi if you like. I encourage that here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.